Hi guys, in this video, I want to give a little bit more intuition about the role of the survival function uh, when doing maximum likelihood in survival analysis. So remember, we wrote that the uh, type one censoring likelihood uh, looks like this. And when doing maximum likelihood, we will take the log of this, differentiate with regards to the parameter uh, and equate to zero, or maybe um, do neutron Raphson or gradient descent or whatever. And the question is, what is the effect that um, the survival function has on this optimization process? So if there wouldn't be any survival function, if there would only be the uh, PDF function, the probability density function, then each point would kind of be like pulling to where it's at, right? So let's say we have this, um, yeah, in the normal case, when we have a normal distribution, it doesn't really apply for survival analysis, but for simplicity, suppose this is the distribution, and then we have an observation here, then this point is kind of like calling the distribution to come over there. It's saying, hey, come over here. You know, and what it will do, it will try to change the mean parameter to come to it. And um, in this kind of analogous way, the survival function always pulls, um, uh, it tries to maximize, right? If, if we have an observation here, then, and this is the survival function, it wants to raise the, the value. It wants, okay, so right now, uh, the, the value of this is around 0 0.5. It wants it to be higher and higher. So it's kind of like pushing the survival function, uh, either calling it to move right or just changing it, that it kind of, raises the value of the survival function. Now, a question could be asked, what would have happened if we uh, just ignored the sensor data? So remember, uh, the main problem in survival analysis is that uh, there is censoring. We don't always see the times on all of our data. Some, some data points, we only know that they survived until a certain time. And then we don't know what happened after. We don't know when the event happen to them. So one possibility is to say, you know what, uh, let's just throw the sensor and just focus on the, on the portion of data that we do know the exact time that the event happened. But this is problematic because we don't have this thing over here that is pulling uh, to the right, that is trying to increase the survival function. Why is it problematic? It's because the estimators that we will get um, by not using the sensor data would be biased. They would be downward biased because we are basically ignoring anyone who survived long enough and uh, then disappeared. And we just look at the people that had the events in the time that we conducted the, the research. So ignoring censoring is bad. You will get biased uh, estimators. You have to use the sensor data that you have. Another question you might ask is why do survival analysis at all? Let's just do, I don't know, logistic regression. Did the event happen or not? Yeah, but uh, with certain events like death, eventually everyone will die. So you do want to keep that information of time. This time information gives a lot of value to you and you don't want to discard it. You don't want to uh, just do logistic regression. You do want to model the time. Okay, and maybe I'll show a small numerical example and suppose that X distributes exponential with a parameter uh, lambda that we are trying to uh, estimate. And suppose censoring distribution doesn't depend on lambda. So for our sake, even if it's not type one censoring, when we do maximum likelihood, we only look at this. We don't care about the sensor distribution. We can ignore it. Okay, and suppose we have two points, one event and one sensor. And for the first scenario, suppose that they are the same time. So we have this data point one, which is an event, and this data point, which is a sensor, and they both happen at one. So if we uh, uh, calculate the likelihood, it's like this. If we calculate the log likelihood, it's like this. And I am specifically um, separating the blue and the red. The blue is for the uh, PDF, and the red is for the survival function. If we do maximum likelihood, we already see that uh, the MLE is half. But let's see what happened. Uh, what is the role of each one of these guys, right? The blue and the red. So if we just differentiate with regards to the blue, we get this thing over here. This is the gradient. 
And if we just differentiate the red, we get minus one. Okay, so for the blue, you can see that it's kind of centered around one, right? If we have, if our point, if the parameter is bigger than one, it will try to push it downwards to one using gradient uh, ascent. And if it's lower than one, it will try to push it back towards one. Whereas uh, for the second term for the survival, it's always pushing down. It's always trying to move the parameter more and more down. And here it's a constraint problem because the parameters here uh, for an exponential model, it can't be below zero. This is how the parameter, uh, the distribution is uh, con constructed. The parameter has to be above zero. So it will try to push it indefinitely to zero. So this is actually a problem. If we only have sensor data, we can't say anything. If all we have is sensor data, then we can't, at least not with this method, with maximum likelihood, we can't uh, say anything uh, about the times because it will just try to set the parameter to zero. Um, and of course it can't. Another thing is that if we plot the survival function, so if we wouldn't have this, okay, we would have um, this red curve here. Okay, this would be the, the survival function for the parameter. Uh, the parameter would be one, right? Lambda would be one. We would equate this to zero, lambda would be one, and this would be the graph. But since we had this, look what happened. It kind of increased the survival. It, so if we only had an event at one, this would be the uh, survival curve. But since we also have a sensor in one, look, it pushed the survival a bit higher, a bit further. Okay, what would have happened if uh, we had the same event, but the sensor would have happened at time two? Well, this would stay the same. Here it would change to minus two. So essentially the sensor now has more power. It pushes the parameter to be lower. Okay, and remember in the expo model, in when we're supposing x is exponential, then the parameter is actually equal to the hazard or to the risk. Yeah, the lambda here is actually the risk, the hazard. Okay, and in this case, the parameter will be one third. Also, this would happen if we leave the sensor, but we push forward the event time. This would have the same effect. We would get the same parameter. If we leave the sensor, but we push downward the event, meaning that the event happens sooner, and this increases the hazard. This pushes the parameter higher and we'll get a parameter of two thirds. So this is just to give more intuition about the role of the survival function in maximum likelihood. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.